Almost every app you build in Glide could benefit from a robust and low cost PDF generator. Maybe you wanna create certificates, contracts, invoices, or reports. The use cases are endless. Now, in a previous video, I showed you how to create unlimited PDFs using a free service I created called HTML to PDF. Now this solution is extremely simple once you've set it up, but the setup itself can be a little tricky because it involves HTML, CSS, and a bunch of custom formatting. And if you want the PDF to automatically be uploaded to Glide, you'll need a different solution. So I've created that solution. In fact, I've created two new solutions, one for people on the free plan and a simpler and faster one for people on a higher plan with access to Glide's API. Both variations allow you to create virtually unlimited PDFs for free. There are no paid PDF generator services. They use Glide tables instead of Google Sheets, which means there's zero sync lag and the PDFs themselves can have custom privacy settings. And since the PDFs are also stored in Google Drive, these PDFs have zero impact on your Glide storage limits. So let's jump into Glide and I'll show you how to set this up yourself. All right, so what I'm gonna show you first is how you would set this up if you were on a higher Glide plan and you had access to Glide's API because it's a little simpler, it's a little bit easier to explain. And then we can get onto the free option if you're on the starter plan or a lower cost plan. So stay tuned for that. But for now, let's do this one. Now, what we have in front of us here is just my operating system or a copy of my operating system that I use to manage all of my client work, to generate contracts, to manage the projects, everything. Delegate tasks, track tasks, everything. And as with any project, there'll probably be some files that are related to this project. So it could be a scope of work pro uh, document, it could be a general service agreement, it could be the first of two invoices, whatever it is. Now we can, of course, as with Glide, upload a file. Um, this is pretty straightforward. We can name it and then select it but this is a little slow and tedious and I wanna streamline everything to do with my business if possible. So I wanna click this generate file button. And what this is gonna do is give me a list of all the templates that I've added to this example. And it will automatically fill out these templates, create a PDF based on all of the existing information in Glide related to the clients, the projects, everything. But what I wanna point out now is something that is exceedingly cool in my opinion and that is the ability to set the permissions of the PDF that is being stored in Google Drive from here from Glide. So I can set it to just internal documents so this is only low code staff members can view it. I can set it to client so this is going to allow all low code members uh, staff members plus whoever email we specify from the client to view it or we can make it public, which means anyone with the link to this PDF can view this PDF. In this case, it's client specific. So we want to set the permissions to client and low code staff. Now, all I have to do now is click scope of work button and it's already generating that PDF for me. So you can see here that the process has been initiated. It's creating the PDF for me. It's gonna upload it to a glide table, not a Google sheet table, a glide table delete the unnecessary stuff that we don't need in terms of like the original template and then set the visibility, right? So I'll go through this step by step for those that aren't familiar with Make. It's basically a way to glue apps together and get them to talk to each other. So the first thing we're gonna look at here is this module here, which is a Glide webhook. Basically this listens for a webhook request or a webhook uh, submission from Glide, okay? That in Glide looks a little bit like, well, you can see that the PDF's already been uploaded, which is awesome, but I'll show you that later. That uh, action looks a little bit like this, right? So when I click the button, it closes the overlay, and then there is a bunch of information that is included in this webhook that is sent to make. So we have like project ID, client ID, client name, etc including the visibility right this is what we were specifying before so we're sending a whole bunch of information to make okay it's receiving that information and then in our uh, google drive we can have a template file that has variables that can be dynamically replaced with the information that we've sent so here's an example of what a template would look like you have double curly brackets around anything you want to replace with dynamic data. So in this case, I could replace the client name 
and then it will say, you know, hope you're having a great, I could replace this with the current day, that sort of thing. So this is a very simple example. And what, and the beauty of this is you can set any font, you can set colors, add images, replace images, add signatures, anything. It's really, really powerful. So I've got this set up basically in a bunch, in a, in a template um, folder. This is where I store all my templates for contracts, invoices, etc. This is just an example. There's only three here, but um, this is where they're all stored. So what it's doing is getting that information, updating the template, downloading that template as a PDF, uploading the template, which is required step. So you have to download it first, then you can upload it. It's uploading to my specific folder that I've said it uh, should upload to, which is private files. So it's going to upload it here. Then it's sending the web view link of that file, right? So we got it here. We're creating all of this. It's going to send along with some other information, the web view link of that PDF back into my glide table called files. So in this case, it's updating this table with all of this information. So we've got the client ID, the project ID, the name of the file, the URL to the file, the permissions, and a bunch of other stuff. So that's what this is. So it's sent it to Glide. It's deleted this template because it, it creates a new document every time. We don't want the document, we just want the PDF. So to save storage, I'm just deleting it. And then based on the visibility permissions we set earlier, it's either going to move it to a folder that anyone with the link can view the contents of, right? So if it's public, anyone will be able to move it. So it'll move it here or it'll add the email of the client as someone who can access this. And now that particular client has access to this and it leaves it in the private folder. So already you can see how powerful this is, right? So this is, this is awesome to create any sort of documents for your glide uh, app. Now, what I want to show you is how to do this basically almost just as efficiently if you're on a free plan and you don't have access to, to Glide's API and you still want to use Glide tables instead of Google Sheets, which takes a long time to actually sync the information. So theoretically, instead of adding it back to um, Glide via the API, we could just add it to a Google Sheet that Glide is connected to and would be able to access it. Now that still works, but it's very, very slow in my opinion. I wanted something faster that updated basically the moment the document was created, it's reflected in Glide and I can see it. So I'll show you how to do that. So this is a little bit more complicated, but you should be able to follow. And of course, if you don't know how to do this, join Loco School and we'll all help you out. So let's jump into it. We have here the app that I'm using as an example. Now what I wanna do is basically show it how it runs, show you that it works, that it's pretty flawless. And then we'll jump into the actual mechanics of how it actually processes the PDF, adds a row to glide tables and, you know, does a bit of magic. So here is just an example app. We're going to sign and submit. The person's going to sign and then we're going to okay, we say, all right, create a signed health declaration PDF. Now, once I click this button, it triggers a fairly complex action where it's talking to make, it's waiting for the file to be created, then it's triggering a Google script and blah, blah, blah. But we'll wait till it shows so I can show you that it works. There we go. And now we have a beautifully signed, very simple health declaration. So the make side of things is fairly similar, but where it's different is in Glide itself. Because we don't have access to the API, we can't tell make to add a row. So we need some way of adding a row in Glide with the URL that is created that links to the PDF. So the first thing we need to do is actually create a Google script. This can't be done another way to my knowledge. And so what we have to do is create a simple Google script that looks for a file. 
Now, this is what the script looks like. I can perhaps zoom in for you. But all it's doing is when we trigger that action, we're assigning a unique ID as the name of the file. So when make creates that file in Google Drive, it's got a unique ID as its name. What we're then doing is triggering a fetch JSON column that's basically sending that same ID, that file ID, to this script. This script is going to look through all of your Google Drive for a file that has that ID, and then it's going to return as a link the web view link, which is basically a link to view the PDF of that file. Okay, so what we're doing is when we click this uh, button back here, when we're clicking this button, it's creating a unique ID, then it's sending that unique ID via webhook along with all the other information to make. Make is creating a file with that ID as the name and then it's adding it to Google Drive and that's where make stops. Then after we've let it process for a bit, we're going to trigger that script where it attaches the file ID to the URL. It sends that file ID to this. This script looks through all your Google Drive to find a file with that ID and then returns the URL. And then we're adding a row to a new table with that URL. So I'll take you through it now. It's a little confusing, but we'll show you how it works. So when I click this button, it's triggering this action. So we're just closing the overlay. Then we are setting in the user's profile a unique identifier, which is going to be the, the ID or the name, sorry, of our file that we're creating. Here, I'm. it's a bit of a glide hack where fetch JSON columns can sometimes cache results. So if you've fetched some URL and it's given you a result and then you change that URL, sometimes it still gives you the old result. So here what I'm doing is I'm kind of causing an error to occur. Instead of putting a URL where I should have a URL, I'm putting a word. It's trying to fetch that word and saying, hang on, something's wrong. And so it kind of resets. So when I put a proper URL to fetch, it's giving me a fresh result. So that's all I'm doing. I'm setting two values here, the unique identifier, which is going to be the name of the file, <clears throat> and then something to basically clear the cache of the fetch JSON column in Glide. Then I'm triggering that webhook, right? So then I'm sending the file ID is going to be the user profile, that unique ID we created that we just added. Then I'm sending all the other information I want. So this would be, if this was a contract, you'd send the price, the whatever, blah, blah, blah. So this is all getting sent to make. Then I'm just going to wait, right? Because, because I don't have access to, <clears throat> excuse me, Glide's API. I don't know when the file is created. I don't know when that process is finished. So I'm just going to wait for a generic 10 seconds. Excuse me while I get some water. So I'm going to wait for 10 seconds. And then what I'm going to do is once I think the file has been created, I'm going to paste the link that sends that file ID to the script because <clears throat> there's no point searching for a file if it doesn't exist yet. So once I'm fairly certain it's existing, then I'm triggering this, uh, then I'm replacing that clear cache word with an actual, actual URL that can be fetched. And that URL is going to look for the file in Google Drive and return a link to that file. Once I'm sure that the result has a link in it, then all I'm going to do is wait a little bit extra just to make sure again and then I'm going to add a row using the URL that was returned by that script and that's going to be the, the file URL <coughs> excuse me and then we're just clearing these values so a little bit confusing but this is what we're setting as the the ID of the file right so we're just putting a unique value here Initially, 
because this fetch column is looking at this column to use the URL, initially I'm going to give it something that triggers an error, right? It's going to say, can't do it. That's wrong. Can't fetch that. That's good because it kind of resets the cache. Then when I'm sure we've waited 10 seconds, when I'm sure that Google Drive has created that PDF for me, then I'm going to copy this and paste it here. This won't work, but I'll show you for example purposes. Paste it here. And then this will return the uh, link of the file, right? We don't have an ID, so this isn't going to trigger properly, but it's going to return the link to that file. When it's arrived, we're going to add a row with this link to the files table. And because it's got the contact ID as well, it'll be then viewable uh, in a relation column for the contacts. So I'll show you what that make looks like. Basically, we're receiving that information, including the file ID. We're doing the same process as before where we're replacing the values, but we're naming the file. This is important. We're naming the file that unique ID because when we search for it, we have to be able to find it. So we're naming the file that unique ID. Then we're downloading it, uploading it and deleting the unused template. So once that's done, basically the action will then trigger this script, right? So we've waited, it's created it. We've pasted the proper fetch URL. We are waited for a result and this is going to give us the result. And then we've added a row to the glide table. So it's a little bit more confusing, probably a lot more confusing, <clears throat> but this is totally free. It allows you to almost instantly add PDFs to your glide tables, not Google Sheets, which takes forever to sync to your glide tables. And it's super flexible, just like the other one with you can use any template, you can use any template in this. And if you don't want to upgrade yet, then this is a free solution. So if you want to learn more, join low code school, this is the sort of stuff that we're, we're kind of helping people do for free in low code school. And um, yeah, thank you for watching.